Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Wizard Chats. Uh, I am Susie Verde, your host, and tonight we have a very special guest. She's someone that I hold very dear to my heart. Her name is uh, Simran Singh. She's the author of IPPY Gold Award winning Conversations with the Universe, Your Journey to Enlightenment, and Your Journey to Love. It's publisher of award winning 1111 magazine and the number one rated. 1111 Talk Radio. Oh my God, Simran, welcome. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful to be with you, Susie. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, me too, me too. Uh, you know, Simran, you always uh, came across to me as this amazing, inspiring, uh, positive, grounded woman. Hmm. Someone who really is rocking and making a difference in the world. And, um, and I um, have always been very interested in the way you teach and share your message from that deep space. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely to have you tonight. And I would uh, be delighted to talk about our uh, show's theme, which is Fulfilling the dreams of the soul while expressing, experiencing and expressing the infinite possibility of one's identity. Wow, mm. that <laughs> sounds big. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a big topic. It's a it big is. topic. It is, it is, it is. So I, you know, let's just start um, from the beginning. Why fulfilling the dreams of one's soul? is so important. Mm. I'm going to start with the way, with the, with the intro that you gave me just now about what you liked about me and what inspired uh, you about me. And the way that I see myself and the way that I live my life is as an example. I serve my soul. I serve my highest essence. I serve what it is within me that needs to heal and grow and expand. I serve and in, in devotion to my soul and my heart. And from the beginning, I knew that if I operated my life from that place, not from a place of what I thought other people wanted to hear, what I thought the world needed, what I viewed as the world, not from any of my opinions, judgments, or projections, but purely from if I just work on myself and can be present to being my best self, I can't help but shift and make a change outside of me because that will be authentic to me and that is what other people will feel. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's so many individuals today because we've been conditioned and taught that the world needs saving and the world needs fixing and people need healing and um, we have to have a life purpose and we have to go out and do something. That's been so drilled and conditioned into us that what we have bought into is a world that is broken. And if our belief system is in that place, what we will continue to create is a world that is broken. But if we can approach whatever's showing up in the world and all the people in our lives from a place of, let me do what fills me up, let me do what inspires me, let me do what expands me, empowers me, then that is going to inspire within it what needs to happen outside of us to shift and change the world that it needs to change and in that way we're not living codependently we're actually working interdependently our desire mm -hmm. to save fix or heal anything outside of us including the world is a codependent practice and mm -hmm. that is what's keeping so many of the issues in place today so so i love when you bring in this concept of interdependency versus codependency and uh, my understanding of the difference is that when you're codependent on somebody or something you're almost like expecting somebody to be always providing you the answers providing you the solutions you're seeing yourself as a victim you're seeing yourself as as you said broken and, uh, and, and lacking of something. Whereas yeah. if you're thinking about the idea of interconnectedness, then immediately you are putting yourself on a higher stage in which you're so capable of doing and, you're, and you wanna go out and play, right? Exactly. You wanna, go, 
Yes. Play is the operative word. That's exactly it. We are divine children of the universe and we are here to play. Mm -hmm. And we get so stuck sometimes in either the idea that we need to be saved, fixed or healed because we're so broken and we're so wounded and all the past history and the stories and the things that happened to us have sent us into this place that we have to change. Or we get caught up in the idea that outside in the world, that we are this person that has come to save the world and we have this thing that we have to do. Otherwise the world is going to stay the way it is. And both of those places are very codependent, but the place of play that you talk about, it is light. It is beautiful. It understands that all of the things that are happening are part of oneness, that light and dark are on equal playing fields and equal stages and create the texture and topography of what we came to experience as souls. Mm -hmm. And so that is how we serve our soul, is to understand that the darkness that shows up is not here to damage us or to be afraid of, it is actually here for us to dive into to more greatly know our authentic selves and our light. Correct. You know, it's uh, um, the idea of um, individuals that are broken, um, and, and looking for meaning and purpose. It's so, it's so present nowadays in our society. Everybody's looking for a purpose. And, um, well, I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people in my circle, you know, my clients, the, the people that I serve. And, um, and that sense of there is something out there that I have to do I think it really hides a lot of anxiousness within because, you know, it's really saying like, well, unless I do it, then I will be happy. Then I will find meaning. And, uh, and uh, I love the idea that the biggest purpose is, is right now, is right here, is the work you're doing right now, right here. And, 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 and almost like processing it in a way that makes sense to you so then you can become somebody else, so, well, someone different, a higher version of your yes. own self. Yes. You know, what if there is nothing that we have to do? Exactly. How, what how if there's it? nowhere yes. we have to go? What if, what yeah, if I we love it. I love are it. here to be present? Exactly. And what that tends to bring up in a lot of people is, well, then what will happen with the world? What will, you know, what will I do? I'll become bored. But that's the very work. Can we be present with ourselves to see what has been conditioned into us, what has been embedded in us that keeps us from knowing our true self. Mm. All the things that we want as purpose outside of us are simply distractions Mm. to keep us from not being present to the feelings of discomfort or boredom or lethargy that might be embedded in our bodies or in our cells or in our minds or even in our hearts. And until we're willing to face those places and understand that those two are not really who we are, then we can't really do anything for our soul. We are only serving an identity and most typically serving an identity that has wounds or brokenness. Correct. Well, the only path really is through whatever is rather than kind of, well, this is, this is wrong and I, I'm projecting myself into the future and then it will be right, right? And then we don't realize that going through means going through us, realizing what is, right? Yes. Even like breathing through all those dark spaces that you are describing. And, uh, and this might sound a little um, maybe intangible to some people, but you know, it could be as simple as accepting ourselves as we are and starting to train ourselves to see the beauty that we are already carrying, that we are already radiating. The, the gifts, the, the simple gifts that we already have, and they're just ready to be shared and, um, and, and, and get out a little, you know, uh, from the mind and into the heart. And, yes. And, 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 and do the play. So it was definitely. Fun. I was just having this conversation with a client of mine, and this is an issue that so many people have. It's an issue of perfection. It's particularly women, you know, they want to be perfect. And that is a future based thing. That means who I am right now is not good enough. Correct. And something must be changed. But don't you and, think, 
Oh, sorry, go ahead. But what I have learned in my own life that it is the imperfections. It is us being who we are in this moment that actually is the greatest effect to those mm. around us. Because if we can vulnerably and intimately own exactly who we are, that is being the example and the greatest teacher to so many other people. But we're running from that. And until we can be with what is, there's no way to move forward. So don't you think uh, we are talking here about a shift, a paradigm shift from a doing consciousness to a being consciousness? Uh, you know, coming from a culture, Western culture, in which, you know, we solve problems by doing versus not solving problems, but, you know, practicing the beingness. Uh, and in that beingness, finding amazing treasures within that, that, that allow us then to move forward in the flow. But then, you know, it's a completely different movement in and out yes. of itself. Yes, and what the head does with those two words is a completely different thing as well. Because so often when you tell people, I need to be, be you need to be being, or we are here to be being, they immediately take that as, I'm meant to stop. I'm not supposed to yeah. do anything. Yeah. Oh, that's and, bad. That's bad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and that is a rich and beautiful place to be. Yeah. And if you can stop from time to yeah. time, it will teach you a lot. Yeah. But even in being, oftentimes, there is a doing quality, but it's from a different place. Mm. Uh, for example, if someone has a loss and they're going through a great deal of grief, being the sadness, being mm -hmm. the grief, being mm -hmm. the tears, mm -hmm. that in itself is something pretty transformative if you can truly stay with it until it completely washes out. Mm. In the same way, if someone receives an award, being in the celebration, being in the joy, being in the receiving, truly allowing that moment to last as long as it needs to last before saying, okay, now I need to hit the next goal or I need to move to the yeah. next agenda or yeah. yay, we did this, we had a party, now the next day is here. Yeah. We have forgotten how to breathe in every experience that takes place. Mm -hmm. and so what we're doing in life is the same thing we're doing in our breath. We're, we're breathing shallow, we're gasping for air. And so when the things happen in our life, we too, we're taking them in in a shallow place mm -hmm. or we're gasping for air and then we're never fully letting out an exhale. And when we do that, we can't really create from the soul essence place. We can't mm -hmm. truly access mm -hmm. the creative capacity of the universe because we're not fully breathing in life. And we are on life support all the time but our being is being willing to take in life in full inhales and full exhales and being very present to that at all times. Mm. You know, it's um, when, when, uh, when you talk about uh, um, we, um, and um, I, I, I immediately get transported to, you know, what do we normally call we? And, uh, and uh, I love, uh, I was looking at your website and um, something that I thought was lovely um, that you said that when there is identity, there is illusion. Yes. And so, yeah, I love that. Uh, this concept of, you know, the moment we step into the space of, oh, okay, this is who I am. You know, we're really um, going through, you know, the, the non-clarity zone that will lead us to confusion because paradoxically, we're so much more than we think we are. And then it's almost like closing the doors of what's possible. So um, I'll give you a clear example. Uh, somebody is going, as you said, you know, through a very difficult time and then and then grieving is very important. But then, you know, something inside is saying, well, okay, you, you've got to move on. You've got to move on. You've got to move on. That's, that's what, you know, somebody intelligent and grounded and, and clear and mature should do. Um, or even, you know, people that are into a lot of techniques of emotional discharge or, or transformation might think, what can I do? to let that unpleasant feeling go away. But then if you're thinking of yourself as this greater identity that is experiencing that pain, but is not, it's not identified with the pain itself. Yes. 
then 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 really you know what you're doing is you're you're like stepping to a whole level of identity of of who you are somebody who is able to live that difficult moment process it but then there's so many other aspects of your identity that are waiting for you once you process that and then yes. and then you can move forward we, we are yes most definitely i write in my book conversations with the universe that we are experience experiencing itself Mm -hmm. And so if we really allow ourselves to be the experience, and that even means not to process, can wow. we go through something even without the processing? Because who's mm -hmm. processing? Mm -hmm. The one that's processing too is an identity. Mm -hmm. What if all emotions, whether they are rage or whether they are bliss, mm -hmm. are, and everything in between, are simply experience? And we came here just to know that as uh -huh, uh -huh. as soon as we understand it and know it and deeply feel it and integrate it, that is allowed to wash away and wash. Yeah. It, it immediately creates a sense of space, right? It's yes. almost like, you know, creates space because then if you, you know, you don't need to hold on to anything. You're just experiencing. Yes, definitely. It's what like if? being the wind, you know, everything yeah. comes in and comes out. And when we start to look at life from that perspective, all of a sudden, everything finds a neutrality. There is an equanimity uh -huh. that begins to form so that nothing in life can rock your boat. Nothing, whether it's something wonderful or something that is devastating, right. nothing will really rock your boat. And some people would say, well, gosh, if nothing is exciting, if nothing rocks my boat, yeah. then why am I here? That would yeah, be really yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I would awesome. imagine that are all of, a lot of people at this point uh, might say, well, you know, so if I'm, if I'm in this space of, of, of say, you know, eternal possibility, then who I am, who am I? Right. It's uh, it's, it's so interesting because, um, how about if, if you didn't have to be anything specific and everything at the same time? And, and in that reality resides your true identity. Um, yes, yes. And right? so much of what even in the spiritual movement has taught is to claim something. You yeah. know, I, I am beauty or I am abundance and wealth or I am in putting something after the I am. But even when we do that, what we're really saying is who our identity is. Because if we're having to say I am abundance, then what we're really saying or what the identity is saying is I'm not abundant. So I need to ask for it. I need to claim it. Yeah. So it's creating the duality right there. Can you just be, I am, mm -hmm. can you just be the presence? And anytime anything comes up, whether it's an emotion or a thought, if it strikes another conversation in your head, or if it, it, it brings up an emotion or a sensation and you start to process, then question who is that? Who mm -hmm. is that that's going into that story? Who is that that's processing that thought? Who is that that is trying to identify that feeling? Because that's the identity. That's the small self. That's how mm -hmm. we start to have a tunnel vision that lets us completely miss the bigger self that we are and that we are connected to within everyone else. Yeah, you say something very interesting um, that is, um, um, and I'm quoting again from your from your work um you know there is a light at the end of your tunnel vision yes and it's you <laughs> hello <laughs> yes yes so if we would only think about yeah, when we're looking at things mm. we tend to narrow into a perspective and so if you imagine um taking a piece of paper and rolling it up or getting a straw and looking through it the whole landscape is in front of you. You can see the entire landscape if you're not holding the straw there. Right. But if you were to put the straw up against the eye and close the other eye to just see through the straw, all of a sudden the grand landscape that exists ends up being very, very tiny. And then we focus on that. That's what the identity does. The identity is looking through the straw. It can only see a tiny picture of the whole. And if we remove the identity, then we are removing the straw. And then all of a sudden we see the vast landscape of the universe that we are. Mm -hmm. What we see is a reflection of who we are. Mm -hmm. We are always being mirrored. And these messages that are coming to us, which I call conversations with the universe, 
are only reflecting what we hold in consciousness. They're only reflecting what we believe. So in my, in my own view or the way that I've done my own work and my own experience of clearing myself out to attain my greatest knowing of the greater self, it's to constantly look at everything around me and just say, if I'm noticing that, where is it at in me and who is it that's watching it? Because that's not me either. That little piece is not me. I'm bigger than that. And if we can allow ourselves, each and every one of us, to understand that we are greater than our identities, our personalities, our cultures, our family backgrounds, our families, then all of a sudden we're gonna to start to see one another with equal eyes rather than these eyes of division or hierarchy that we, we look from now. Which is, which is so important today in, in, if we think about the world situation, isn't it? Because um, most people probably would have heard about the concept of oneness and, um, you know, and, 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 and it might be a little difficult to grasp what that really means. But if we start by ourselves and we start by thinking, well, you know, if I am growing in my capacity of seeing myself as, as one with the universe, you know, the logical conclusion, next conclusion is, well, if that is happening, then, then the, main, the main brains that are isolating who I thought I was are, are actually dissolving and I'm touching other people and other human beings and other animals and other life forces. And, um, and it's almost like, you know, a rebirth process in which it brings so much joy to one's life. It's so much abundance. And at the other, on the other hand, it forces us to see that even our values that are connected to, you know, what's mine, what's my roots, what's my possessions, what's my country, right? And, 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 and why should I live for them if they're not so as important as we thought they were. So it really could create a whole revolution in the way you live life, step by step. And, um, and that's how I, I believe that um, we, could, we could care for anybody in another continent, you know, Syria or, or Africa or, you know, the Middle East. It's just this sense of, oh my God, you know, in the level of consciousness, yes, you know, I'm so much more and they're so much more. And, and, and there's almost like one big field that is uniting us more yes. and more and more and more. But, it, you know, it takes that awareness to really look at ourselves, Susie. It's, mm. It starts with... If we it. look at the conflicts, if we look at the challenges, if we look at the different so-called fights that are out there right now or the things that even people are marching for or standing up for, those are our attachments. Mm -hmm. We're either attached to our gender or we're attached to our possessions or we're attached to our political party or we're attached to the way we live. And part of what life is trying to do for us right now is to teach us how to detach. Mm -hmm. Detachment does not mean not feeling. It actually means the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. You will feel even more intensely if you are detached. It's just you won't have to control it. You can hold the space for what is happening and yet still support the earth by having your own emotion of what that brings up inside of you and facing that. That's true detachment. What I learned in my own life was that when chaos happens, the worst thing to do is actually to dive into it because you just create more chaos. Mm -hmm. The greatest antidote to chaos is stillness. Mm -hmm. And so right now we live in a world that has for its entire history, always gone back into chaos even more. So we have seen this continuous rise and building of things taking place. And even our earth is reflecting that to us. Mm -hmm. But when we stop and we pull back and we still, the chaos actually settles down. Mm -hmm. And I did that in my own life. I actually stopped for two years. There was grief. I needed to feel through it. I allowed mm -hmm. myself to watch whatever that would bring up. And it was amazing the amount of light that came through the darkness and the amount of change that happened by stopping as opposed to when I was trying to make something happen. Oh. And so that would be one of the greatest 
messages that I could give individuals is those moments that you desperately want to act, that you're coming from a place of fight, that you're coming from a place of reaction, that you're coming from a place of identity, that you need to control something or fix something or change something, or that it's your job to do because there will be no one else to do oh. it. In that moment, pause and allow the divine plan perhaps to take over because you either believe in a divine plan or you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in a divine plan, then that means everything is exactly as it should be. And there will be an organic unfolding that will balance and right all wrongs. It may or may not happen in the time that you want, but it does happen. If you don't believe in a divine plan, then you will get in there and you will keep trying to control and fix. And mm -hmm every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So you will activate the laws and the karmas that go along with that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, even the, the idea of fixing is so relative because as you said, Simran, you know, whatever, whatever is unfolding is part of a process as well. And, um, you know, I've, um, I've, I identify a lot with what you said about taking time off and, um, and, 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 and letting whatever darkness or difficulties or, or shadows or, or, you know, needing to experience things in a different way. Um, the moment that, that I actually, when I threw, went through difficult moments, personal difficult moments, and I did that, and, and that's basically what I do. Every time I, I reach a point that I'm not feeling centered and connected, the first thing I do is I, 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 I recluse. I, I go somewhere to my little cocoon or I go on a retreat. And I start to really let myself go through whatever it is. And, I'm, and I wait. And I pray. And I meditate. And I breathe. That's, that's also what I you know, usually do. I'm, until the next moment arises and um but um that is the opposite of fixing because then fixing means there's something very wrong with that process and i think that process in everybody's life and in a collective level is the moment that we are shedding right we are we are going through the process of metamorphosis that um you know somehow our systems have come to a point in which we we cannot go forward on that state of consciousness and we need to shed the excess baggage whatever that yes. is yes yes and that that is that is kind of the 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 seesaw that we have created in our lives because yes. we go too far one direction so then we have to balance out by going the other direction and Correct. get into stillness and when what it needs to happen is us stepping into our naturalness we as women even we have become very much like men where we're very action oriented it's all about building businesses or it's mm. about being as strong and it's about pushing and toiling and and working and all and of the fighting things. solutions and fighting to be solutions. happy and to but, have prosperous lives yeah exactly but that's that's keeping us out of our natural rhythm that is not the typical way of the feminine mm. the feminine knows how to sit it knows how to receive it knows how to balance it understands timings and cycles and rhythms and knows when to ebb and flow inside of things. I do a lot of things, but I live a life that's very empty when it comes to how my time is taken up because I don't push to try to get things done. Mm. You know, while, while many other people are trying to teach people how to be more productive, I teach people how to stop. Wonderful. I teach people how to step back. I teach yeah, people how to yeah, find yeah. their natural rhythm again. Yeah. And what they discover is that they get more done. Mm. I, I can get more things done in a three-day period than it takes most people a month to get completed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I get 27 days off. I just work the three days. But yeah. that's because I follow a rhythm. Rather than having a schedule or a list or a time frame or pushing myself to get something across, I really listen to my body. And if my body says, I don't feel like working today, I don't work. If mm -hmm. my body says, I don't want to write, I don't, don't want to be on the computer, I don't do any of those things. I wait uh -huh. till the moment that my body and my heart and my mind say this moment. Uh -huh. And then all, all of a sudden, whatever needs to happen, happens and it happens even more quickly. Uh -huh. As I was, uh, before I began this journey, what would take place is I would push and try to get something done. And sometimes a project 
would be worked on and I would toil and I would struggle and I would not come up with the right yeah. thing and it would take yeah. endless amounts of time. And then as I learned my own natural rhythm, I started to discover that the moment my body was ready to do it, it happened within a few hours. I was, mm. Mm. and so mm. that's what we have to learn is not to get on the seesaw where we're exhausting ourselves to where we have to take a break, but where we're really stepping into a place of natural rhythm where we are interdependent with life mm. and we're allowing divine time to line up with mm. us and lead and guide us into our soul missions and our prosperity. And in that way, we have balance and we become our own purpose rather than looking for a purpose outside in the world. Really cool. Beautiful. Oh my God. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to the ones listening to this incredible um, interview, uh, my guest today is Simran Singh. She's the author of the IPPY Gold Award winning Conversations with the Universe, Your Journey to Enlightenment, and Your Journey to Love is publisher of the award winning 1111 magazine and the number one rated 1111 talk show. Ah, I love it. I love it so good. <laughs> so, we're coming to the end of part one of our interview. Uh, I hope you can follow part two. And uh, I'm going to continue the conversation with Simran about lots of other things I want to explore with her. So you can't miss that. Thank you. Continue with us on part two. Thank you. <laughs>